From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We we'll help you survive. Well, hello, Mr. and Mrs. America. I am Keith Allen and proudly welcoming you to this Wednesday's edition of For the People for this June the 21st, 2017. A weird occurrence in Flint, Michigan, and of all places at the airport, news just coming in. Um, An individual apparently stabbed a police officer at the airport in Flint, and right now uh, they're trying to get the information of why he did what he did, but... A uh, critical condition the officer is in. We don't know if this was an act of uh, uh, terrorism, ISIS-related. Uh, we don't know if the man had a beef, uh, what he was trying to do, but very tense situation. The airport there in Flint is actually closed. Uh, just kind of an unusual happening there in the small airport there in Flint, Michigan. We're not talking an international airport of any sort. So as information becomes available, and if there's a news conference during uh, the broadcast, we'll probably uh, go to it to find out exactly what happened there. Tropical Storm Cindy, this thing is uh, turned into rather a monster, as I'm looking at radar right now, as it's creeping towards the Gulf Coast. Uh, it looks like where I'm at, at least in Tampa, Florida, we're not going to get walloped by this, but the National Weather Service says that flash flood watches are covering Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia as this slow-moving storm is trudging closer to the U.S. mainland. These heavy rains are said to be um, on its east side, meaning that the major rain threat stretched from southeastern Louisiana to the Florida panhandle. This is a rainmaker for sure. Forecasters in Louisiana said the storm could bring a potential for the storm surge of up to three feet along the Gulf Coast. Storm surge is, you know, abnormal rise of water generated by the storm over and over uh, uh, predicted uh, with the uh, astronomical tide. But uh, according to the National Weather Service, this thing could really wreak havoc in a lot of different states. So we're kind of just keep an eye on this here. Uh, Cindy, by the way, the third um, tropical storm has maximum sustained winds near 60 miles an hour, for those who like to uh, follow these things. Um, This morning, with slight weakening expected uh, into tomorrow, but the storm is located about 170 miles southwest of Morgan City, Louisiana, as of early this morning. Um, A radar image depicting the tropical storm location. I'm kind of just looking at this thing. Um, They're they're saying that uh, we see this thing park on the west side of the state and dump rain until Saturday. This is Lee Smithson, uh, who is the Mississippi Emergency Management Agency Executive Director. States and local officials in Louisiana, Mississippi, were considering the possibility of emergency declarations. We do know that Texas Governor Greg Abbott ordered the State Operations Center on Tuesday to raise its readiness level uh, for the uh, conditions that are going to be worsening there. And then Alabama Governor Kay Ivey issued a state emergency Tuesday because of the threat of torrential rains and other severe weather, including isolated tornadoes, uh, dangerous high tides, and currents. And tornadoes definitely look like this could be a big part of this storm system that's that's come in. And anytime I have the uh, opportunity... You know, I will tell you, weather radios, no matter where you live, practically in uh, the world, these things help. And there are apps, by the way, for your phone. The cell tower doesn't come down, but there are apps as well that actually trigger kind of like the Amber Alerts. You can have apps that trigger uh, trigger when there's, you know, uh, a funnel cloud or something coming towards you. Hurricane warning or watches if they're issued by the National Hurricane, uh, you know, Center, the National Weather Service in your area. 
But look into it on your phone. That's another option if you don't want to get a weather radio. But uh, especially during storm season, folks, you got to be smart about these things because just when you don't think that there could be something heading your way, there could be. So, you know, it's kind of this the unexpected. And usually these storms happen, unfortunately, when people are sleeping. Um, so you just don't want to be caught off guard. So have, have a head start if you can. Get a weather radio. It's not outdated. It's not antiquated in the day of electronics. They still work, and they still actually save lives. So be smart and get one. And if uh, your loved one doesn't have one, there's a perfect stocking stuffer or something that you could just give them to say, here, plug this thing in. But the one thing you have to do on the weather radios uh, is you have to check their batteries. And so if you're checking your smoke detector, yeah, what's that? (laughs) Yeah, some of you don't check them. Uh, or don't have them, but every household should seriously have detectors. Uh, You know, I'm a safety guy. I just try to look at those things and, you know, eventualities, folks, redundancy. And I learned that from the founder of this broadcast. I mean, this was this guy's middle name was Mr. Redundant. I mean, what if that generator went out? What if that battery went out? I mean, he, he had backups upon backups, just didn't want any surprises. And some of you, you know, already have all that contingency plans underway and and ready to go. But, you know, things happen. What did FEMA used to say? Hope for the best. uh, uh, Plan for the worst. Hope for the best. There you go. And if you're doing that, then uh, you're always going to be in the safe zone because you're ready for anything. Uh, The Dems weren't ready for anything, though. Not last night. Because the Georgia race, huge huge victory and donald trump is calling it such a winning streak he says as a rejection of the dem obstruction five, five and oh folks feel like a sporting game here but seriously five and oh this is a big deal and thank you for those that listen to us in georgia for making that that extra push there i think we we had some impact there in georgia uh, for our affiliates out there and for our listeners out there. But seriously, Republican Karen Handel's victory, uh, very closely uh, watched last night for the Georgia runoff as a clear endorsement, by the way, of the administration's agenda. And this cast Democrat special election losing streak as a rebuke of the party's obstruction. And Donald Trump, of course, weighed in, not a surprise. He said, tweeted earlier, Democrats would do much better as a party if they got together with Republicans on health care, tax cuts, uh, security, obstruction doesn't work. Amen. There's just too many, um, too many pivotal issues. Um, they're at hand right now for uh, this, uh, the rhetoric that's coming seriously from the left. If you're truly a patriot and truly love this country and, and truly really want to rebuild the image of the Democratic Party, um, you could be a trailblazer and you could reset for 2020. Uh, but I don't think this is going to do any good for the Democratic Party. And I don't care if uh, Holder, Eric Holder, by the way, He's announcing in 2020. He's he's he, he's weighing his options. Eric Holder, yeah, the former attorney general, weighing his options. Give me a break, Eric Holder. Uh, yeah, nothing. We don't want anything in the White House that resembles the Obama administration. Uh, you want to talk about corruption? Uh, you want to talk about? Basically, making our police officers sitting ducks and aiding and abetting a lot of these thugs across the country and emboldening the gang situation, doing nothing in Chicago, allowing them to just kill each other like one horror movie. Uh, Just so sad. And just to think that that's where they came from. That's where Obama blew in from. Couldn't, couldn't, Couldn't inspire those people to stop killing themselves. Couldn't inspire them for a better day to make a difference in America. No. They had a race bait. That's another story. But I I just think, you know, when there's an opportunity, when you're given an opportunity and, you know, opportunities, folks, and you know this truly be in life as you get get older, that opportunities don't, um, they don't come as quick as they did when you were younger. 
And even in life when you're younger, when you burn bridges, they just, it doesn't happen for you. It won't happen for you. And Obama, he really had, had an opportunity to be able to really um, heal wounds, long uh, divisions and divides in this country, bridge, bridge, uh, you know, bridge the bridges and, and all the stuff that Hillary Clinton used to talk about. And it takes a village. I mean, he could have been a repairer of these things. But now the Democratic Party is really way off the reservation and attacking left and right. By the way, this victory in Georgia last night had a lot to do with the people in Planned Parenthood. Uh, they were against it. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we wish they would all go away. Seriously. But uh, tax dollars, our tax dollars. George's tax dollars specifically had a lot to do with last night's victory. So it was very obvious in suburban Atlanta in that district, emphasizing a strong conservative agenda, um, both the economy and cultural issues, critical, rallying the Republican base last night. And I tell you what, congratulations, um, Karen Handel, and congratulations to all you Republicans that got out there, got the vote out, did what you had to do. You know, Handel had uh, previously lost primary bids for governor and U.S. senator and signed the anti-tax pledge of uh, Grover Norquist Americas to, for tax reform, uh, but Ossoff refused to sign. Now, in addition to Handel, vowed to repeal Obamacare and replace it with the American Health Care Act favored by President Donald Trump and House Speaker Paul Ryan, Ossoff ran as a backer of Obamacare. We all know Obamacare is a sinking ship. It's the Titanic. It's literally the Titanic. People say, well, it's, you know, this is the only thing that we have on the books. Forget about people's premiums have risen to 200%, 150%, the crazy numbers, but it's the best thing we have. And certainly those Republicans could not come up with anything better. What do they know about health care? Obama had it all under control because he knows about your health. He knows how to make you better. They knew best. It's his legacy, folks. It's the only thing. And I've said this and I've beat the drum on this for so long. That library uh, that they're working on in Chicago. What in the world is going to be on the walls in that library? I just I can't think of anything great other than he can say. Probably with a straight face, other than his mother was white. And, and, and listen, I have fr I'm friends with a lot of African-Americans and I don't feel this is racist at all. He's biracial. He's not 100 percent African-American folks, Kenyan, whatever you want to call him. But yes, yes, other than Bill Clinton, that was tongue-in-cheek, folks. People get offended and they get the, ruffle, the, the feathers ruffled. Uh, but, but seriously, he can go and say he was the first black president. I know that it meant a lot to a lot of African Americans, okay? I realize this. I understand this. Obama would be probably terrific to have a beer with, baby. If you're into golf, maybe put some golf balls around and chat about different things. But his his politics, folks, his politics uh, are a reflection of what happens time and again. And these these runoffs and with the elections, it's proof and evident of his failed policies. If he was so victorious, if people really were relishing all the amazing things that Obama did and his people did, his administration, then we wouldn't be having these runoffs. We wouldn't have these issues. It would be a no-brainer. It would just be Democrats' victory everywhere across the country because Obama is great. He is truly the Messiah. But he didn't materialize to be the Messiah. People made him to be the Messiah. They painted his picture. He was a puppet. I mean, it, 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 a lot of the Dems are still so ignorant, and they can't even see it. It's right in front of them. The failed policies of the Obama administration have brought us here to this point right now. And in eight years, you could have got a lot of stuff done. Oh, you don't blame the Republicans. The Republicans? Oh, the Republicans? What are you talking about?